Okay, let's move on to uh, Bomber Bernie. Um, so, so on October 7th, um, Bernie Sanders says, I absolutely condemn the horrifying attack on Israel by Hamas and Islamic Jihad. There's no justification for this violence, and innocent people on both sides will suffer hugely because of it. It must end now. So, you know, essentially, you know, there's no justification for this violence, uh, supposedly. Um, you know, even though you know, Hamas and Islamic Jihad um, you know, attacked military base and other um, you know, groups of uh, troops and uh, security forces surrounding Gaza and keeping Gaza locked in their prison. Um, you know, they're trying, you know, and, and also uh, they intended to, uh, you know, capture some prisoners of war. Uh, you know, some of the ones who got uh, captured, uh, and it's not clear who captured them, uh, were civilians, but uh, the vast majority were people in the military, military prisoners of war. And, you know, the intention was to um, use them as you know, bargaining chips to get Israel to release the many thousands of Palestinians that it was and still is today. The numbers approximately doubled in the last month. Uh, being held in Israeli prisons, uh, you know, often without any charges or just ridiculous charges, such as uh, your, you know, whatever the charges they uh, level in this case. But you know, somebody liked a uh, pro-Palestinian um, tweet on uh, X or whatever, um, and, you know, they get thrown in jail for that. Or you know, certainly if they you know, protest against the Israeli government or, or criticize it in any way, um, they're likely to get around it. Or, you know, certainly if they resist um, the occupation anyway, you know, they'll get thrown in prison. Um, and so anyway, um, you know, there was justification for, you know, this armed uh, uprising. There, there was certainly no justification for any uh, deliberate attacks on civilians that took place, just as there's no justification for Israel doing that. Um, but, you know, I, in fact, as we've talked about before, under, you know, international law, uh, people under military occupation, people under, you know, colonial occupation have the right under international law uh, to resist in whatever manner uh, they see fit, whether it's, uh, you know, the Great March of Return, the uh, nonviolent protest in 2018, where Israeli snipers picked off and killed uh, over 200 people and uh, wounded upwards of 8,000, um, or, you know, armed resistance, you know? I mean, you know, during the, during the Holocaust, uh, some Jews engaged in armed resistance against the Nazis. Uh, is anybody contending? Would Senator Sanders condemn that as a horrifying attack on Germany by, you know, uh, Jewish terrorists or whatever. There's no justification for for that violence. Um, so so I replied to Bernie. I said, so would you also say that the violence against Germany, Japan, and Italy during World War II was unjustified, Bernie? Um, you know, so uh, you know, violent uh, you know, uh, military action by the Allied forces to stop you know, fascism. And, you know, granted, there were other motives on the part of the United States and some of the other players, but that's another story. But, you know, uh, without armed resistance, uh, you know, fascism would have uh, perhaps taken over the world. Um, and where are your condemnations for the decades of Israeli violence against the Palestinians? Um, you know, because you know, certainly it overwhelmingly outweighs um Palestinian violence against Israelis, and, you know, thus armed resistance is justified. And in fact, I said, you've supported most of the violence by the uh, government um, you've been a part of for the last 30 plus years and have people arrested when they protest your support of it. So, for instance, in um, the um, 1999 uh, bombing of 
Yugoslavia by the United States and other uh, NATO powers. Uh, Bernie Sanders was all on board with that, and people came to his office and protested, and he had them arrested. He's also had people arrested just recently for protesting his support for uh, Israel during this recent escalation in the conflict. And uh, you know, I cited an article here, great uh, piece in uh, left, uh, you know, what the hell is it? Uh, uh, left voice, um, not on our side, on Bernie Sanders and imperialism. Uh, you know, it just goes through his record of his 30 plus years in Congress and shows how, you know, in almost every case, you know, he's uh, supported U.S. military intervention. Um, you know, he stood against a, a small number of uh, coups that the U.S. has backed. But basically, if the U.S. troop sends troops somewhere, Bernie is all on board with that. Um, very, very rarely does he oppose it. Um, you know, the only exception that comes to mind off the top of my head uh, is uh, Yemen. Um, but... You know, well, I, I mean, even even the Iraq war, you know, supposedly he was big on opposing that. In fact, uh, during the 90s, Bernie Sanders voted uh, for U.S. bombing and sanctions of Iraq, which, which killed several hundred thousand people. Um, and, uh, you know, he voted for, you know, after the Iraq war was launched, you know, he voted for funding the military occupation of Iraq throughout the early 2000s. Um, so, you know. There's a reason why I like to call him bom Bomber Bernie. You know, he's certainly not in by any stretch of the imagination anti-war. He never has been. Um, and you know, back in the day when Tulsi Gabbard was running for president, you know, I you know contrasted her foreign policy uh, stances and voting record to his. And uh, yeah, at that time she was much better. Uh, not anymore. Um, you know, although uh, I will say. Bomber Bernie supports uh, the Ukraine war and Tulsi Gabbard opposes that. So I'll give her that. But on uh, um, Israel, Palestine, and just a horrible, horrible, horrible perspective. Uh, and Bernie is you know, maybe a little better. At least he expresses some empathy for people in Gaza, but he's refused to call for a ceasefire. And so let's. Uh, go to that now. Okay. I want to just clarify one thing, Senator, if I might. You support a humanitarian pause in Gaza. Some of your fellow progressives say that there should be a full-on ceasefire, which would require an agreement on both sides to halt the fighting. Do you support a ceasefire? And if not, why not? Well, I don't know how you can have a ceasefire, permanent ceasefire, with an organization like Hamas, which is dedicated to turning <laughs> out chaos and destroying the state of Israel. And I think what the Arab countries in the region understand that Hamas has got to go. So I, I want to just clarify one thing, Senator, if I'm OK, so <laughs> Hamas has got to go uh, is being used here as a justification by Bernie for refusing a ceasefire and you know, letting Israel keep bombing and murdering Palestinians. Um, so, you know, the, uh, I don't know what to say except, uh, you know, uh, Bernie Sanders is a joke. He's just not... As that, the title of that article said, not on our side in terms of uh, standing against, you know, in this case, you know, genocide in uh, Palestine. Um, you know, uh, there have finally been uh, some, you know, it's very interesting in Congress. Uh, basically, no white people uh, except, I think, uh, a senator from Illinois. Uh, no white people in Congress uh, are supporting a ceasefire. Uh, the only people who are supporting a ceasefire are uh, you know, the perhaps half a dozen members of the uh, squad. Um, but, you know, actually, more generally, uh, most of the Congressional Black Caucus is pretty horrible. But uh, um, Rashida Tlaib, in fact, uh, is um, 
Palestinian American herself has family in Palestine, and she has taken a very strong stance, uh, you know, against uh, uh, U.S. support. You know, a strong stand for ceasefire and uh, you know, uh, calling out the genocide for what it is. And uh, um, you know, uh, support backing the slogan "From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free," which is you know, as as I've talked about before, you know, a call for Palestinian liberation from Israeli occupation, Israeli apartheid, and a call for, you know, a dem democratic single state of uh, Palestine. Um, you know, whereas, uh, you know, uh, the Israeli lobby and uh, Zionists claim that it's a call for genocide, which is, you know, just ludicrous. There's no evidence that that's true at all. And, you know, as I said last week, you know, I've been going to, um, demonstrations for Palestinian rights, free Palestine demonstrations since the 1980s. And, uh, you know, you often hear that slogan and, you know, always, 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 it's a call for Palestinian liberation, not any of this other bullshit that uh, you know, Zionists attribute to it. Um, let's see how we're doing for time here. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, no comments. Uh, somebody must have something to say so far, or maybe you just agree with everything I'm saying, which is fine with me. Um, but anyway, um, let's see if I want to say anything else about Bomber Bernie. Uh, oh, I know. Uh, okay, so same clip I just uh, showed you was promoted by APAC. Uh, you all know who APAC is, right? The American-Israeli Public Affairs uh, Committee, you know, a um, you know, lobby group basically trying to uh, you know, blackmail members of Congress into uh, uncritically supporting um, Israel and giving them all the money they want for weapons to murder Palestinians with. Um, and... Yeah, so they, uh, you know, promoted Sanders's position. Um, here's another tweet that APAC put out. Thank you, Senator Sanders, for your clear and principled opposition to calls for a ceasefire with Hamas. So, so APAC is basically saying, thank you, Senator Sanders, for not doing a damn thing to prevent uh, the genocide of uh, the Palestinian people in Hamas, the 2.3 million people living there, who, uh, you know, over 11,000 of them have been murdered by Israel. Who knows how many are going to die because they don't have any food, they don't have any clean water, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, plus, the bombing is uh, continuing unabated. Uh, over a million refugees. Uh, you know, Israel has uh, clearly stated, you know, they want to kill as many people as possible. They don't distinguish between civilians and military uh, uh, in uh, Gaza. You know, if they uh, stay in the northern part of Gaza as opposed to fleeing to the south, like Israel has you know, ordered them to, um, you know, and still bomb them when they flee to the south. Um, you know, and Israel has stated uh, publicly, many Israeli officials have stated, you know, their objective is to push Palestinians out of Gaza entirely and into uh, the Egyptian desert. And then they want to take over all of that land. You know, they've said they want to take over Lebanon. They've said they want to take over, um, well, they already have taken over the Golan Heights in uh, Syria. Um, so... You know, like the only difference I can see between Israel and you know the United States back in the heyday of uh, American uh, settler colonialism is that uh, Israel started a lot later. Uh, the U.S. started and Canada started several hundred years earlier, um, and uh, you know that they basically completed their genocide and their conquest of the North American continent. Um, you know, Israel only started 75 years ago, but they're, they're doing the same thing. You know, 
you're doing the same damn thing. Um, and you, uh, this asshole here on the right of your screen um, isn't doing a damn thing to stop it. He gives lip service to talking about, oh, gosh, it's so horrible that, uh, you know, um, that all these people are dying. He doesn't really say who, who's killing them. <laughs> you know, it's just really weird the way he dances around what's actually happening. Um, but uh, anyway, um, you know, APAC appreciates you, Bernie. Keep up the good work. 